Hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, in this part, which this is part three, it's going to be similar to part two because we're still going to be dealing with the um, avatar editor creator tool. Um, but this time we're going to focus on mobile because the steps are going to be a little bit different. Um, my plan was to show you how I build iOS games from a Windows computer using Unity Cloud. Um, but I just checked and all my certificates with Apple have expired <laughs> and I don't have a Mac right now to create new ones. So we're just going to do it for Android because that doesn't require so many hoops. All right. So the first thing I did is um, in my project, I switched it to Android. We were on um, WebGL, but now I'm on Android. Um, one thing that would be nice is we don't really have... Um, one thing that's cool when you're on iOS is it'll actually give you all the different devices resolutions. Android doesn't do that because there's what, like thousands of different Android models versus the, you know, 20 you could potentially target for iOS. Um, but for, let's just go ahead and switch to like a portrait view, um, 16 by 9. Um, although I don't know if any phones are phones using 16 by 9. Oh, well, we're going to use 16 by 9. And um, let's adjust our uh, canvas, right? So let's do 1080 by 1920. Um, you could be using a landscape game, and you probably would be using a landscape game, but just for fun, let's do portrait. And let's go ahead and make our panel bigger. Yeah, it doesn't need to be that big. Let's just go like that. And let's do that like that. And then our button. I could just scale it, but we'll change the width and height. And then we'll go to the text and make it a little bit bigger. Cool. All right. <clears throat> um, and maybe we'll take our game window and just pop it over here. There we go. So that's our scene now. So let's go ahead and take a look at the example that's set up in the Ready Player Me folder examples, web view examples. All right. So plugins, Ready Player Me examples web view examples let's just go ahead and take a look at their scene and here we have it um if we hit play nothing's probably gonna happen because i think it requires us to actually be in the device yeah see web view browsers only support on android or ios build and run a device to test but really we could just build from here and have a working example but let's take a look and see how it actually works the documentation does a pretty good job of telling you what everything is so in the hierarchy we have the web view test game object. It has the web view test script component on that, as well as a canvas with some buttons. So if we go look at the web view test, here we have the web view example. And then it's just got the canvas, some buttons, and if I doubt any of this is connected to any logic in the inspector because they like doing it in their script. So all the logic's right here on the WebView canvas, on the WebView test, so that's nice. We can go ahead and go look at that example. All right, let's go ahead and open up their script and see what they got going on. All right, so here we are. <clears throat> so they have all their UI components um, listed here as variables. And then our two buttons, they have added listeners to them so that when the buttons are clicked, um, they call the method display WebView and hide WebView. And so on start, we're subscribing to those listeners and it finds WebView if we don't already have WebView. And WebView keeps session alive. There must be a script on the WebView that keeps session alive. So there is another um, script on this scene. So this is our one that just kind of handles all the logic of getting it set up. But our WebView canvas itself has this WebView game object, and that's what's getting referenced from our WebView test script. So if we want to look at that script, we can see there's a keep session alive bool. And uh, I imagine that just keeps it from killing itself and being done. We're not going to worry too much about that. So we have display WebView, which gets called whenever we click on the display button. And then um, closes it when we click the close button. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't think we really need to dive into the logic too much because it's very similar to um, what we would see, what we saw with our WebGL example last time. <clears throat> but um, I would probably just 
for mobile, I probably wouldn't rewrite this whole thing. I would probably just take this and then um, store what extra data we need. So for example, completed, we're getting our completion events arguments and this avatar, is that a game object? Come on, is that a game object? Yes, so this is the actual avatar, avatar that gets loaded. So it stores this in a variable so we can then use that however we want. And I imagine it's a public variable so we can access it from other places. It is not, it's private. So if you wanted to be able to access this avatar from a different script, you want to make sure that this is public so you could access it. But I'm betting that if we just do um, an Android build and open this up on an Android device, it's just going to work. Let's refine it real quick though, since this is a demo scene, let's go ahead and use the avatar loader and let's load our avatar into the scene just to make sure it still pops in there like we would expect. All right, so this is what we would hope to see um, on an actual build is our guy right there in the center. So I'm gonna delete this, I'm gonna delete my avatars folder and uh, let's go check our build settings. We're on Android. And one thing that I'm gonna do, because I don't actually have a, uh, a regular like Android phone or tablet. So I'm actually going to build this to my Pico um, because my Pico should let me view it um, as a flat screen Android app. And so this will still let me test it. So let's just see if this works. And we we'll tried this. It should. Um, but we'll build and run and we'll come back and see what it looks like. All right. So I'm sharing this view from my VR headset um, using SideQuest's uh, screen copy feature. Um, it's It's got a weird cropping, but it should at least let us see a little bit. You can see it's got like a really weird prop of the thing but inside my headset it's flat screen um i actually not even wearing the headset to make sure you all can see what i'm seeing um but if i click on the launch editor oh shoot you know what i just realized i didn't change my build settings this is the webgl build not going to do anything for us <laughs> sorry let's go change our build settings and get the uh sample scene on the build settings all right so here we go here's the new uh the new scene <laughs> it's cropped really weird in here um but uh, let's see if i can hit the button there it goes it says it's loading and there we are full as life it fills the entire uh view of the device um so can i scroll this i doubt it. yeah i can even scroll that so either you might be asking so why is it that this will work on Android and potentially would work on iOS, but it doesn't work on VR. That's weird, isn't it? Um, I've been curious if I might just try it. I don't think it'll work. I might try it because we're gonna we're gonna cover how to do this with VR using the Bootplex plugin. Maybe I'll see if we can use this method, but I can't imagine it works because they specifically say in their documentation you have to use Bootplex. And I completely don't understand why, because obviously it works in flat screen mode on my VR headset. Um, so why won't it work when not in flat screen? All right, so um, I think that's the end of this episode. I know it's a whole lot shorter than the WebGL version, um, but for the, for the mobile one, I would just use their um, built-in scene. Um, because there's not a lot of extra to it. It fills the whole um, viewport of the phone um, and it gets it done. The only other thing you might want to do is change the way the buttons look. Um, and then, because it's already in the script capturing the stuff you need, like uh, um, the actual avatar, which you might want to make this a public variable. And the only thing it's, you might want to be capturing two that it doesn't seem to be storing is the URL. Um, so we're getting it in this method on avatar created and we use it, but we don't actually save it as a variable. So that's one other thing you might want to add in this method here is save this URL. Um, that'll be extremely useful for uh, if you're doing multiplayer situations or um, even if you're not, it might be worthwhile if you're gonna be loading this URL, even in a single player experience at runtime, you can save the URL in player preferences and you can check for that key on boot and then you won't have to have them go through the whole editing process again. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. We're really close to becoming YouTube partners. That would be sweet. 
Um, also, comment down below if you have any further questions regarding using the WebView in on mobile devices. Um, and for real time um, answers, check me out on my Discord. Um, I include the link in the bottom of all my videos in the description. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, see you next time.